the house on Sorority Row, which is a cool, fun slasher. It has a cool killer in there. A little jester on there, which reminds me of a movie called Slaughter High, which is not released on DVD, which is a fun slasher, which should be. Some cool deaths in that one, Slaughter High, but House of Sorority Row is pretty decent. We have Intruder here, which has a bunch of cameos by like Bruce Campbell and like Sam Raimi. I haven't watched it. The deaths look horribly brutal on the YouTube that I've seen. Uh, I'd like to watch it. I just haven't got a chance to. That's Intruder. Hey, if Jason goes to hell, uh, it's not very good. It's not the worst thing ever. The Freddy call at the end is kind of redeeming quality about it. We have Jason X. Right when Jason got an upgrade, I got the need to fall asleep. Then we have Just Before Dawn, which is a Jeff, Jeff Liberman movie. He did Blue Sunshine and Squirm. This one's pretty decent, but I, was, I felt myself kind of feeling gypped because I think it was a bit overrated. They hyped it up pretty much. But I guess it has uh, some decent things about it. It has cool scenery and stuff. Yeah, George Kennedy's in it. The funny thing is, I heard this DVD release is cut by a bit or something, but I don't know if it's true. And we have Madman here, out of print DVD, underrated one right here. Galen Ross is in it from Dawn of the Dead. This is a pretty decent slasher movie, some pretty good deaths, some pretty good suspense and area. It's, it's traditional, I'd say, slasher. This is Midnight. This probably should be in my cults and families type deal, but it's a John Russo film. It's kind of like a backwoods family type deal. It's probably be my cults and family, but I forgot, and here it goes. Midnight. I only seen parts of it. I know Lawrence Tierney's in it. I need to sit down and watch it. It didn't seem too bad. I'm a fan of Lawrence Tierney from the Reservoir Dogs and stuff. But here comes uh, My Bloody Valentine. This is an underrated slasher. Pretty cool. Nice uh, scenery. Like the killers in the coal mine and stuff. He's dressed nice. Leaves a cliffhanger. It leaves an open ending. I would recommend that one. It's pretty good stuff. Then we have Phantom of the Mall, Eric's Revenge with Paulie Shore. I'm pretty sure I haven't watched it. It's a slasher type deal. Don't know how it is. It looks kind of silly. Then we have Popcorn, which is like a fun film right here. It's a film with it. They're watching films on the big screen, and there's a killer killing people, and they're fun films. It seemed like they had a lot of fun with this. It has uh, D. Wallace Stone in it and stuff, and uh, Ray Walson. And it has the heavy set fat bully kid from um, Christine, Moochie Welsh. He's also in The Curse. He's in this. He's in a wheelchair in this movie. I guess movie karma cut off with him. Then we have uh, Prom Night with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis and Leslie Nielsen. I, uh, not too impressed by this film. I thought it was a bit boring. I think it's overrated. I think there's much better slasher films that would... They, like, suck its nuts and go into pieces. I don't know why. But maybe because they got the director to talk about it. I just thought it was a bit overrated. I don't think it's the worst thing ever, but... Then we have The Prowler, special effects by Tom Savini. One of those... It's one of those movies where the killer is just so goddamn mean, like The Burning. I enjoy this one. I have, it's been a while since I've seen it. Lawrence Tierney's in this one, too, for five seconds in a wheelchair. Um, this one's pretty decent. It has some good deaths, like I said. It's A.K. Rosemary's Killer. I'd have to give it another watch, but I remember like being completely in awe of the murders. Like, that's awesome, you know. But I think they were far and in between. There was only a few, but like that. But still, it's worth a watch. I'd recommend that one. Then we have Silent Night, Deadly Night. What can I say about this? This is a sleaze cheese fest, but it's fun. In a lot of parts, other parts, it's kind of just boring. Uh, it's the beginning when the woman gets raped. You're like, geez, can this get any worse of a mo Christmas movie? And then like the grandpa, who's like. This guy who looks like Santa Claus who like says Santa Claus is evil or something like that to his it's hilarious. But Linda Landa Quigley's in it. Man, I can never say her name right. She's made of the Deans Eternally Dead. She has a pretty bad death in this one. That one's pretty decent for a cheese fest. I already talked about Sleepaway Camp One. It's in my Fright box set, Fright Pack box set. That one has a crazy ending. But here's Sleepaway Camp Two. This one has a, a ridiculous high kill, kinda of like twenty one. It's crap, but it's fun crap, and you know, I probably could get through it again if I had to, and I would laugh and maybe enjoy it even. And your Sleep Away Camp 3, body counts not as much. This one's the funnest of the films, I think. Not the best. One's probably the best, but this one's the funnest of the bunch because they get all these, like, terrible actors, and they, like, say, oh, they take, like, a camp of inner, half inner city kids, half rich kids, and they make them go together, and you get all these terrible characters, and there's the Angela, Pamela, or whatever her name is, slap right in the middle, killing them. Looking old as hell. Then we have Slumber Party Massacre 1 and 2. I would recommend Slumber Party Massacre 1. They said like a feminist directed Slumber Party Massacre 1. She did a hell of a fun job with it, I'll tell you that. She must have, she got the genre down to a T, I think. But 2 is a bit cheesier, not as fun, doesn't really make much sense. It's more like the Friday the 3rd, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street kind of ripoff thing. But then we have Sorority House Massacre 1 and 2. I figured Sorority, I thought Sorority House Massacre 1 was a bit boring. I didn't watch the second one, so I don't know how it is. 
Then we have Splatter University, directed by Richard Haynes, the guy who helped with like Class Nukem High and he did the Alien Space Avenger. This one you feel so much like a trauma film, but it's not. It's a bit more serious. There's some pretty gory uh, throat gashings, but I guess it's a decent slasher. I mean, it's nothing too special. I put it on par with like something like Graduation Day. Then we have uh, Terror Train here with Jamie Lee Curtis. This one's pretty fun. Cool idea on a train. I think it has Ben Johnson in it or something like that, or Warren Oates. I think it's Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. David Copperfield's in it. That's a cool little twist on there. It's pretty decent. Decent kill count. Fun film. I'd recommend this one if you're a big fan of slashers. And then we have Unhinged. Unhinged is a, a video nasty. It's a bit boring, if you ask me, but the case sucks you in. One of my friends who's not like into any of these horror movies, he saw the case and was like, I even watched that. That movie looks cool, but. This one has a pretty cool twist ending, like, but the, pretty much the film's not as boring and not that great. Then last, we have When a Stranger Calls, the original. I haven't watched When a Stranger Calls. I don't know how it is, but from what I understand, it's a classic, Charles Durning. I guess you can pretty much figure out the plot and everything, babysitting and stuff. Well, and then a killer calls and everything, creeping around. I don't know how it is. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen the remake. I don't really want to see the remake, but I don't have the sequel either to that. But thanks for, uh, for tuning in, and I'll see you next time. Bye.